in the last stream, we were working on finalizing this setup right here, our new ore generation and processing system from Create. We have a fairly complex system here that takes all of the ores and all of the, uh, the cobblestones that are generated by our block breaker, which I have replaced down between streams. It is now right here. So behind this, we have lava dropping down onto flowing water, which creates regular stone. That regular stone is then broken by this small block breaker, which is currently turned off with this lever right here. All of the ores and all of the cobblestones are then collected by this chest or by this item collector and then placed into this chest. They are then hopefully going to be extracted from the chest and then processed. All the ores get processed on the left into their end form, whether that's emeralds, diamonds, lapis, um, or redstone for ores that are not ingots, um, or iron, copper, gold, silver, tin, lead, etc. for ores that are ingots. And then on the right hand side, everything that's not ore, so cobblestone, limestone, granite, etc. gets dropped down and smelted and then ends up in this chest here. Now, the one thing that we didn't do at the end of the last stream, and the one reason why this system is not currently online, is we didn't set up the import cables, which means right now, if we did turn the system on very quickly, all of these chests would begin to back up with all of the items that they're going to eventually get. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to make at least three import cables. Thankfully, the import cables from the Simple Storage Network mod are fairly easy for us to make. They're made with four network cable and one regular hopper. The regular hopper is just missing a regular old chest. And actually, we do have 612 oak wood here. So I feel like we should just go ahead and make a stack of chests for when we need them in the future. We can then make the hopper. And then assuming we have four network cable, we can craft up the import cables. Now these do work on their own. So we could, for example, just put these down onto our chests, connect those up to our pre-existing cable or to the storage network route. And those would start to import the items inside of these chests. However, they would do it fairly slowly. And actually, if I have some network cable here, I can, I can show how these work. So if we just temporarily do something like this, we should start to see all of the nuggets in here getting pulled in. But you'll notice that it goes from 48 to 44 to 40. It's fairly slow. It's not incredibly slow. And I'm not quite sure yet just how fast this ore processing system is going to be. But I kind of would like it if these pipes would import a little bit faster. And that's where these come in, the speed upgrades from the simple storage network mod. These increase the speed of importing and exporting. And they are a little expensive. Each one requires two blocks of redstone. Uh, the only problem is that you can't actually use these on these basic import cables. You have to upgrade the basic import cables to filtered import cables, these ones right here. I'm not quite sure why the basic import cables exist because the filtered import cables are extremely easy to make. It's just four regular import cables with a regular Minecraft barrel. And boom, you have four filtered import cables, which are essentially just upgraded versions of the regular import cable. So now with these, what we can do is we can right click, that opens up an interface. If we wanted to, we could begin filtering certain items so that only certain items were imported from this oak chest. That's not something we're going to need today, but it's something we might use in the future. And then in the top right here, we have four slots for upgrades. Now there are two upgrades we can choose from. There is the speed upgrades, which of course makes it faster. And then there is the stack upgrade, which changes the, the way that the importer works to import a stack of items at a time. Unfortunately for us, the stack upgrade does require blaze powder that we don't have just yet. And so for the time being, we are gonna have to stick with speed upgrades. As of right now, we've got not that much redstone. We do have enough to make one. So boom, there is a speed upgrade. If we throw that in, like so, and if we reconnect this, uh, we should now see that it's pulling out 28, 24, 20, 16. So it still only pulls out four at a time, but it's doing it a lot faster than it did previously. So for now, it's gonna have to do, of course, once this system is up and running and once we start processing all of the redstone ore that we're generating uh, with our block breaker, we should be able to make a lot more speed upgrades, potentially uh, four speed upgrades for each one of the importing cables. Um, and eventually once we get blaze rods and therefore blaze powder, we can also put uh, potentially one stack and three speed upgrades into each importer, making them as fast as possible. So each one is gonna be pulling out a stack at a time and it's going to be doing it very 
quickly. Um, again, I don't know if that's necessarily going to be necessary because I don't know how fast we're going to be producing stuff. Uh, but going forward, of course, we could make our windmill here bigger to generate even more kinetic energy. And we could use that increase of kinetic energy to make things like our crushing wheels and our fans even faster to hopefully increase the processing speed of the entire system. For now, though, basically what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this uh, horrible cable that I just placed down. And then I think we're going to run this underground. So I kind of want to dig out a, a tunnel that I guess will probably run across the wall like this. And I want to hook up the import cables to the bottom of these chests. So they're kind of hidden underground. So we'll have one here. We will have one here. And of course, we'll have one over here. Now, one thing people did tell me in the YouTube comments between streams is that uh, over here, we don't actually need this filter. This filter, if we take it off, is currently just set to filter sand. But it turns out, uh, one thing that I did not know in the last stream, that you can just grab a single block and place it directly into the filter. So if you just want to filter one thing, you can just put that one thing into the filter slot as opposed to making the filter and then filtering for that one specific item. So we actually managed to get this filter back and we can use it for something else in the future. Just a quick side tangent there. For now, let's go ahead and see if we can't get all of this uh, network cable down and connected to all of the import cables. And there we go. Everything is now hooked up. We are, of course, going to fill uh, the floor in with stone again so you can't actually see all that cabling and all those uh, ores that I'm going to leave down there. And uh, someone in the Twitch chat did actually point out that uh, as a reward for completing one of these quests, this one right here, the storage inventory quest, we did actually get a stack upgrade as a reward. And so we do have one in the system. But now I'm going to put that in this chest because I think that the nuggets chest is going to be the chest where we get the most items. So uh, if we go ahead and throw the stack upgrade and the speed upgrade in, you'll see that it very quickly begins to pull all of the stacks of nuggets out of that chest and sends them around into, for now, this obsidian chest. Of course, that is something we are going to want to rectify uh, because we are going to want to get a compacting drawer for each and every different ingot that we get from this system. The reason for that is that we want all of our nuggets to go directly into compacting drawers because when a nugget enters a compacting drawer, it becomes both a block and an ingot and is therefore accessible to our simple storage network in both block ingot and nugget form. And again, we don't really need it in nugget form. We really want them in ingot form. So what I think I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to replace this top row here of empty uh, storage drawers with compacting drawers. I'm not entirely certain how many we need. Um, also, by the way, I did add like these doors and these ladders between streams just to make it a little easier to get up and around. So it looks like we have nine ores or nine ingots making ores in here. So nine, you know, ores like iron that are going to make an ingot. So I think what we'll do, if we can get down this ladder here, is we will get rid of these three, these three, and these three. That's actually perfect. There are nine uh, drawers up at the top here. We can replace all of those with compacting drawers. Right now, we have one compacting drawer. The recipe for compacting drawers is a little bit expensive, but nothing really too crazy. Um, if we're going to make nine compacting drawers, that means we need 18 pistons, which might be more iron than we currently have. It might also actually be more redstone than we currently have. Yeah, we're a little low on that as well. Uh, temporarily, I can go and uh, kind of manually get this up there. If I put the uh, redstone in there, it should make its way up and should get dropped down into the crushing wheels and the redstone itself should end up over in this chest for us to use momentarily. The Twitch chat is also pointing out that we do have uh, 382 iron nuggets in the system, which we can craft into iron ingots to uh, temporarily get us uh, the extra iron we need for the pistons. We then also do need to get one storage drawer for each compacting drawer. Again, that should be fine because we can take the storage drawers that we already have and use those in the crafting of compacting drawers. And then we need five stone for each one. So we're going to need 45 stone in total if we're going to get nine compacting drawers. Right now we have got uh, two more. So we've got 31 stone in total. Uh, thankfully, we do have over 300 cobblestone and we have a nice fast emerald furnace over here. And so uh, it shouldn't take us too, too long to get everything we're going to need for nine compacting drawers. Chat has pointed out that I actually only need 16 pistons here because we do already have that one compacting draw, so we only need to make uh, eight more. And if my calculations are correct, we should have everything it takes now to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. 
in combination with the initial compacting drop that we had. And so now if we go ahead and put these down and I do want to make sure these are all locked when I put them down. So I'm gonna hold my key in my offhand here. And then as I place them, they are automatically locked again, meaning that nothing is gonna go into those drawers until I manually place something into them myself. There we go. Uh, so now we can put that key back in our backpack and we can begin uh, allocating these to different resources. So we want one for iron, we want one for copper, and then a few nuggets later, we can do one for uranium, one for gold, one for silver, one for lead, one for aluminum, and one for zinc. Nice. So now, chat, I'm fairly confident that what we should be able to do here is slow down the conveyor belts. I'm going to slow these down to like eight for the time being, just because I don't know how fast the system's going to be and that the speed of the conveyor belts determines the speed at which items are extracted from the chest here. So if we go ahead and place down the brass funnel, like so, hopefully this slow belt speed does extract them slowly. Again, that might seem too slowly, but once this belt actually, you know, saturates, which it will do because it's pulling them out uh, fairly consistently, then we should see this going quite quickly. And again, we're in a bit of a weird situation because right now there's a backlog of ores. So like this, for example, is a full stack. I actually think this is too fast because right now that's a full stack of coal. I'm going to turn this down just a bit if I can. Maybe to like two, <laughs> which might seem crazy slow. But again, at the moment, because we have uh, full stacks in here, that means that like a full stack of coal is going to make its way up and then get dropped. And our crushing wheels are currently not fast enough to handle that. Right, they're gonna take a little while to process a full stack of coal. And so I think what we're going to want to do is slow that right down. Even now, I think it might be too fast. Once we've worked through the backlog, we can then look at increasing the speed because at that point, we're gonna be generating the ores kind of one by one. You'll see up there, the ores are just kind of sitting there now. And if this system takes longer than say five minutes to process all of the backlogged stuff, some of our ores are going to despawn, which is not really what we want. In fact, I might even go as far as lowering that down to like one like that just to make it real slow and try and make real certain uh, that we don't lose like some of this diamond um, or redstone all there. Okay, so the Twitch chat has once again pointed out that I'm a bit of a fool here. So it looks like you can in fact change how much is extracted from the chest at, at any given time. So right here, when you're looking at a funnel, if you look at the filter slot and then you scroll, you can change the number that is extracted. So by default, it's set to X, which means I believe it's just gonna pull a full stack if it can, or as many as it can. Uh, but if you scroll up, you can go all the way up to a stack. And so if I set this, for example, to uh, three, right now we're at 30 nickel ore. If I pick this nickel ore up by just right clicking on the belt, that goes down to 27 because it only pulled out three nickel ore. And so I think what I might try here is I might try setting this to one, which might sound crazy, but again, I think once we've run through the backlog, I think I might be fine. And then I might try just increasing the speed of the belt to see if that, that works. Because I think the crushing wheels and the washing system should be able to handle one pretty fast. I do want to try and collect all of the ores that are sitting up there before I do this, though, and kind of put them back into the, uh, into the system. All right, so a little bit of tinkering later. And we have the extraction speed still set at one, so it's only pulling one ore out at a time. Um, if we look up here, it is working by the looks of it. So um, if there was like a backlog, you would see the items stuck in that chute. The fact that there are no items in that chute or they, they move through quite quickly implies to me that the backlog isn't really there. Like the wheels are keeping up with the speed at which the items are coming in. We have just increased the conveyor belt speed to eight. And we have been testing kind of everywhere between four and eight. It looks like it's doing okay. You will notice we have a slight problem, and that is that some of the ores kind of jump from one belt to another. So it jumps over to this belt and then goes back in, which is not really what we want. I do think we might be able to rectify this by adding one more chute to the equation. So if we put another chute right about here, and then we can always make that glass again. And not only is that going to add like an extra buffer slot, but it looks like anything from here goes directly into that chute as opposed to kind of falling off the belt into this chute. And it looks like, chat, this is actually working. 
I also added uh, a filter over here because apparently we didn't have one uh, for gravel and cobblestone. So that's now filtered. Previously, there was some sand going this way as well, which is not what we wanted. Uh, just for gravel and cobblestone. I think last time I just put one here, but we needed a second one down here. And I also updated the filter on this funnel because previously, um, at the end of the last stream, we put a filter on here that allowed anything that couldn't be smelted into the chest. Again, that's not what we want. Um, I, what I've done is I've changed this and I've just whitelisted all of the things we do want. So these are all of the smelted versions of things like granite, limestone, stone, diorite, all that stuff. Um, but once it's been smelted into the form we want it in, should now make its way into this chest and then into the system. Um, I also moved one of the speed up grids over uh, into this importer as well because the, uh, the, the chest with like coal and lapis was filling up pretty quickly. So really at this point, Chan, I think we can go ahead and turn this on. And the final question is whether or not the blocks are being broken faster than they're going out. Which I don't think they are. It looks like this number goes down by one. And then you hear the block breaker go and it puts another one in. So it looks like this is working as intended. Again, we can always tweak the system if needs be. If it's not working fast enough, we can always improve our windmill, increase the speed of our crushing wheels, make them process things faster. Uh, we might run into a bottleneck with our fan down here because uh, people did point out to me, in the YouTube comments that making the fan faster doesn't actually increase the speed at which it washes items. It only increases the range at which it washes items. So if we wanted to wash faster, we would have to add more fans. We could, for example, add one on the left side and then one on the right side and have both of those blowing on these middle items uh, to make them wash faster. That's a possibility. Um, for now though, I'm gonna leave this system as it is because I think it is working as intended. Uh, we will check up on the chest before the end of the stream to see if it's actually backing up on items or if we manage to work through the backlog. Over here, things are going just fine. You will see that we are now actually uh, like full up on redstone and coal. Like this storage drawer is full and so it's starting to back up in our chest here, which is not ideal, uh, thankfully. The storage drawer mod does add upgrades along the top here, all the way from tier one up to tier five. And given that we do have quite a lot of emeralds, we've got 65 of them ready to go. We could really just jump in right at the tier five upgrades, which increase the capacity of the storage drawer by 32 times its base value. So with the two by two drawers, these can hold 512 items in each slot. Uh, 512 multiplied by 32 is 16,384. Uh, and so by adding just one tier five storage upgrade to the system, uh, we would increase the capacity of each of these slots to over 16,000. So to make this, we need one upgrade template, which is made with eight sticks and a storage drawer, which we almost have. We're bizarrely just missing the uh, sticks there. Again, we'll make a stack just to have them for the future. You do get four upgrade templates here, which is very nice indeed. And then boom, we get a tier five upgrade, which we can put directly into here. And then now if we take all of this out and double right click on our draw controller, all of those have now made their way into here because we now have a much larger capacity in that singular draw. Again, it's quite possible that we might have to do a similar thing for some of our other draws going forward. I do think it'll be a little while before we get up to 512 diamonds, but things like stone, for example, I could see us getting up to 512 stone fairly quickly. And so even preemptively here, I will go ahead and put an emerald upgrade into that just to give us that breathing room. Now that that's taken care of, let's quickly go ahead and claim all of our rewards. We actually did get uh, some storage upgrades there uh, as a reward, which is very nice indeed, including four void upgrades, which I'm very happy about. And um, we actually need to change these drawers here because again now we're pulling in the smelted version of all of this stuff over here so what i will do real quick is i will uh, grab my key unlock this drawer take all the stuff out of it for example we got the scoria here replace that with the cooked version the version we're actually going to be getting going forward uh, we can do the same with all the rest here and uh, at that point we can then go ahead and add one of these void upgrades in and there are two ways you can do these, by the way. You can either just right-click them on, um, or you can shift right-click. Uh, if you shift right-click, you can also take them out again, like that. And there we go. All of these have been replaced. So they're now all the new smelted variants, and all four of these drawers have the little void upgrade icon. Uh, so they all have the void upgrade, basically meaning that once they fill up, so once we get, for example, 16,000 cobblestone or 16,000 stone, it will then void any excess stone that is made, uh, which is completely fine. I'll just delete it from the game. Uh, over here, once we get 512 granite, any excess granite that is made will be deleted because we don't have the uh, upgrade in. If we wanted more granite in the future, we could then go ahead and add one of these upgrades here, allowing us to hold even more granite. But for now, I think that is completely fine. Now, the next thing that I want to work on in today's stream is I would like to get the auto feeder upgrade for my backpack. 
because one of the bands of my life is the Twitch chat constantly shouting at me to eat more because I don't eat regularly enough. I let my hunger get way too low. And then when I don't eat, the Twitch chat shouts at me to eat and I have to eat and it's a pain. Now, the backpack mod that we've mentioned previously, we do have one of their backpacks right here, um, allows you to rectify this via the use of the feeding upgrade. This feeds the player with food from the backpack's inventory. And it's really not too difficult to make. It requires one ender pearl, of which we have, I think, about 40 already in the system from dropping all the rotten flesh. It requires an upgrade base, which is four string, four iron, and one leather. It also requires a golden carrot, a golden apple, and a glistening melon slice. None of these are going to be too difficult. We should have enough golden nuggets to make all of these. The only things we need are apples, carrots, and watermelons. Now, I'm pretty sure that carrots we already have. Uh, we got these when we dropped dirt in episode one. I think melon seeds we have. We totally do. Now, apples are a different story. Apples we don't have. And we also don't have any kind of sapling just yet either. However, if we get a market from the farming for blockheads mod, we can begin to trade things like emeralds for saplings. So if we type in sapling into JEI, you can see that we can buy a sapling directly from the market for one emerald. And again, we do have 61 emeralds and they're not really too useful, at least not right now for us. And so I think trading, for example, one emerald for one sapling uh, or even for one apple sapling that would then allow us to get infinite apples would be a pretty good trade. The only problem is that to make the market, we need uh, five logs, two planks, and then one red wool. And at the moment, we actually don't have any way to get red dye. However, one thing we can do, and one thing I think I mentioned in a previous stream, is we can make grass from blood magic using, or with blood magic, using dirt, bone meal, and wheat seeds. Once we have grass, we can then bone meal that grass. And once we bone meal grass, we have a chance to get poppies. Poppies we can, of course, craft down into red dye. And then we can use that red dye to make the market. We also get the added benefit in that uh, when you break grass, the bone meal grass, that is not the grass block, uh, you have a chance of getting hemp seeds. And hemp seeds from immersive engineering, uh, when grown, get you hemp fiber, which you can then craft into string. And so if we get some hemp seeds, we could then use those hemp seeds uh, to automate the production of hemp fiber. And then once we have an unlimited amount of hemp fiber being automatically grown, we then have unlimited string and unlimited string equals unlimited wool. And we can finally get those elevators that I mentioned in a previous stream. And we can once and for all get rid of all of the landers that we have all around the base. So that's kind of my plan here. So if we grab one dirt, one bone meal and one seed, we should then be able to drop all three of those into our alchemy table. Boom, boom, boom. And not too long later, we get a grass block. What we can then do, much like we did in the first episode, is we can take some of our granite. We can right click that granite onto our blood altar, which currently has zero LP in it because all of our LP is going into this apprentice blood orb. But uh, if we quickly grab our dagger of sacrifice here, we can rectify that situation very quickly. And we don't even need that much because uh, each granite only takes 10 LP to transform into dirt. And there we go. Once we have 26 dirt, all we need to do now is go and find a place to put this down and, and then let the grass spread. So this grass here is spreading quite nicely. While we wait for that to spread, we can go ahead and uh, drop down this melon seed. And again, we'll probably move this grass in the future, like make a new area for it, but it's not just like down here by the portal. But uh, for now, we can go ahead and, uh, and shift next to this watermelon to make the stalk grow just a little bit faster. All right, let's see then. Can we get some hemp seeds? We can. And then can we also get just one singular poppy? The answer to that question would seemingly be no, at least not in our first round of bone meal. That is fine. We do have uh, close to 40 bones, so uh, we can go and uh, try this again. There we go. There's our poppy. So now we have the poppy. We can go ahead and craft that down into some red dye. Then back in our crafting terminal here, we can craft up that red dye with some white wool. And then from there, we should have everything there we need to make ourselves a market. Nice. And for now... We can go ahead and stick this, let's say, in the wall over here. 
I will dig a space behind it, for reasons you will see momentarily. If we do something like this... We got ourselves a market. So now, if we go, and if we grab, let's say, a couple of emeralds here, what we should be able to do is uh, head on over to uh, swap o -Matic, and we should be able to grab ourselves a sapling. Let's say that we go for an apple sapling, as it's apples that we're after. There we go. And I believe that we can also get a web sapling. Not to be confused with the World Wide Web, this web is uh, spider webs. There we go. So now, if we go and grab some dirt, and uh, how much granite do we have? We got 17, nice. So we're gonna get two more dirt real quick from our blood altar. Nice. What we should be able to do is drop down our dirt, which I think for now I will put into the floor. And actually, I'll do it a bit far apart. We'll do it here and maybe here. We can then drop down, let's say, our apple sampling and give that a quick shift. And then we can do the same over here with our web sampling. And you'll notice that this one has apples on it, and this one has spiderweb fruit on it in the top left there. Uh, the benefit of these is that we can shift, and by shifting, we actually accelerate the growth of both the apples and the spiderwebs as well. And so what we should be able to do here is uh, not only very quickly get apples that we can then right-click, and of course we can use that to make the golden apple required for the feeding upgrade, but we can also do it over here with the uh, spiderwebs, and once these are fully grown, we can do the exact same thing. We can right-click, and we get string. Now, again, going forward, I would like to automate the process of growing industrial hemp seeds into hemp fiber that we can then craft into string because that's a less uh, manual process, like it's automatic, and we can just get infinite string that way. But for the time being, if we do, for example, want to make some elevators, we can spend a couple of minutes stood here growing spider webs, and then from there we can use those uh, spider webs to make wool, and then from there use those with some of our ender pearls to make elevators. And not too long later, we have enough wool here to make our first set of elevators. So if we take two of our ender pearls and surround those with wool, we can make two white elevators. We can put one of those white elevators down at the bottom of this ladder. Let's say right about, actually, I'm going to put it right about here for now. And then we can put the other right at the surface, like so. And then now, if we walk over this ladder and jump, we get teleported up to the surface, and if we walk over this ladder and hit shift, we get teleported down to the lower level. Nice! And we can also go ahead at this point and get rid of this uh, stone shaft in the room here. It's no longer needed. Um, and at that point, I kind of want to put this into the ground. But again, I think for now, it's going to be easier for me to walk forward from here as opposed to jumping from the, uh, the lower level. So for now, I think this is fine. Again, once we upgrade to the tier 4 altar in the future, we'll probably end up moving this uh, elevator to somewhere else. But we do now have the ability to get up and down here much more easily. And uh, that's even making me want to re-add the uh, rock candy trinket here because uh, one of the only reasons I took it off was that it was a bit of a pain to get up and down elevators or to get up and down ladders. But now that we have elevators, we, uh, we don't really have that problem. And I think going forward, uh, what I might do between streams, I might spend a bit more time uh, shifting to get uh, string to make wool to even replace these uh, ladders right here and potentially also uh, this ladder for the kelp right here as well. Someone does ask in the uh, Twitch chat, can the elevators be configured to make you face the right way whenever you go to the floor? They can. So right now, if you go down the elevator, you face in whatever way you're currently facing. So if I face this way and I go down, I face the wall. However, if we right click, click directional, and then uh, real quick, you'll see right now we're going to the west. If we change that to south, now, whenever we come down, even if I'm facing this tree, for example, it's always going to point me at the blood altar. So if I come this way, blood altar. If I come this way, blood altar. No matter which way I go, I always point to the blood altar. And I think what I'll do up here is I'll do the same thing, but I'll have it point towards my crafting terminal because I think most of the time we're going to be going down we're going to want to use the blood altar and most of the time when we're going up we're going to want to head towards our crafting terminal back over in the crafting terminal we can now make our golden apple like so we can make our golden carrot as soon as we get some golden nuggets are we actually out of gold nuggets we are we've used up all of our gold right away there clearly we're not processing um, our ores fast enough just yet or maybe gold's at like the back of the queue for, uh, for all processing, but there we go. We got a golden carrot. 
We then need to get the upgrade bit, which does require four string and one leather. Leather, again, we can make in our alchemy table with four rotten flesh, one flint, and one water sigil. Uh, we have three rotten flesh, which should be fine uh, because we do have some zombies downstairs waiting to be killed. And then uh, we also do have our water sigil on us in our backpack here. So let's quickly go ahead and do something like this. As soon as we have the one rotten flesh, we can do one, two, three, four with the flint and the water sigil. That gets us four leather, a little bit of tree twerking later, and we have our four string. And so back over here, we should be able to make the upgrade base. And at that point, Chad, the only thing that we're waiting for now is the glistening melon. So we're just waiting for this watermelon to grow. And again, not too long later, we have a melon that we can go ahead and break. And if we take one of these melon slices and craft it up with some more golden nuggets, we get the glistening melon slice, at which point we should be able to make the first tier of feeder upgrade, like so. And if we hit B, you'll see on the left-hand side, we have one upgrade slot. As you upgrade your backpacks to higher and higher tiers, for example, the iron, gold, diamond, and netherite tier, you get more and more slots to add more and more upgrades because if we go to at uh, backpack here you'll see there are quite a few upgrades that you can add to your backpack for now though we're just interested in the feeding upgrade which we can put in uh, you can even toggle it on and off if you don't want it to work and then from there we'll sort our backpack real quick what we can do you'll see that right now we are hungry if we take our fruit salad and place that into our backpack the backpack should automatically detect that we are hungry and feed us our fruit salads to keep us fully saturated nice we also have the added benefit now of being able to take some of these uh, apples that we're creating here, which we can also use with our cutting board that we made previously to get ourselves even more fruit salad. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and once again claim all of our unclaimed rewards. We got some XP and some bone meal, good stuff. Let's take a look at the factory quest line here. So we've got the Coke brick, we've done that. If we go back down to our Coke oven, we should have some cold Coke, we do. That's that quest complete. If we grab some creosote, which we can do by putting the bucket in the blue slot over here, that's another quest complete. And then the quest after that is to get treated wood. Treated wood is used in many immersive engineering recipes. I suggest making a stack or a few. So let's go ahead and get uh, at least two buckets worth of creosote here. From there, what we should be able to do is uh, grab some of our logs, craft those down into planks, craft those planks around a bucket of creosote, that gets us eight treated wooden planks. We can do the same thing again right about here. That gets us 16 wooden planks. As a reward, we do get between 12 and 24 treated sticks. We got a little unlucky there for 12 treated sticks, but I think uh, in the grand scheme of things, that's fine. We did get quite lucky on some of the earlier crafts that we did. Now, in order to get the water wheel, which is really the first quest that's going to allow us to generate redstone flux, we are going to have to first get the blast brick, because it does require steel, I believe, to create the kinetic dynamo, which is required in order to actually extract redstone flux from the wheel. Oh no, the actual wheels themselves do require steel in order to make them. Interesting, I didn't know that was the case. Either way, in order to make blast brick, we need nether brick, we need regular brick, and we need magma blocks. Magma blocks, of course, being made from magma creams, magma creams being blaze powder and slime balls. And so... I think we're probably, chat, going to want to head on through to the nether. In the nether, we could try and find some magma creams and kill those, or we could even try and find some magma blocks, right? Let me go and quickly check our nether fortress. Before we do, let's also, real quick, make some armor. Again, we do have quite a few diamonds here, and we've got even more diamond ore waiting to be processed. I also think we have a bit of diamond ore waiting in the system as well. So I think it's probably not going to be a terrible idea to invest in some diamond armor just to make sure that we don't die the second that we run through into the nether. For now, I will keep my engineer's goggles in my backpack because I do think we're going to want to swap back to those most of the time that we're working with anything from the create mod. But uh, let's go see if there aren't any nearby magma blocks which do spawn in the nether. Okay, so not too long later, I was mining out some uh, nether quartz here because I was going to make a, uh, a sword. I was going to make a new sword and then upgrade it with nether quartz because uh, much like how we added redstone to our pickaxe to make it faster, you can add nether quartz to a tinker's sword to uh, make it deal more damage. However, whilst I was mining nether quartz, we did find some uh, magma blocks down low. And 
The Twitch chat is telling me that my cloud trinket here protects me from all fall damage. I don't know if that's true, but we're going to find out. It totally is. I don't know if it is all true, like all fall damage, but at least this distance is still fine. And so it's possible there might be lava under here. I'm not entirely certain. Um, we do not have our magnet on us. That would have been far too sensible. It doesn't look like there's any lava under here. And so I think, chat, we should be pretty good to just take a bunch of these and use them right away in the crafting of, of Blast Brick. Back at home, we need 36 uh, bricks. Thankfully, we do have 36 clay that I've just made using the Blood Altar down here with the, the sand and the air sigil. And then we also need 36 nether brick, which we could, of course, get by smelting 36 nether wreck. And so just as soon as that's done, we can throw that in. And at that point, we should then have everything that we need in order to make 27 blast brick. And much like with the cook oven, the blast furnace is another 3 by 3 by 3 multi-block, which again, for now, I think we'll probably put in the wall over here. Real quick, before I start digging out even more stone, one more thing that I would like to do, and the chat has been recommending for quite some time, is I would like to upgrade my dank one that we have right here. If we upgrade it to a dank two, which we can do by surrounding it with eight blocks of redstone, that should increase its storage capacity. So initially we just had the original nine slots. We now have an extra nine and the capacity increases even more for every tier you go up going forward. Uh, but basically I want to add a lot of these ores to the dank null because as we start mining especially now that we have an automated system for uh, for generating ores we don't really need to keep all of the ores that we mine and they do kind of passively fill up our system which is not great i do also think that the dank 2 yeah can hold even more so it can hold up to 1024 of each item as opposed to the 256 that the initial one could hold so if we do ever need some ores, we can check in our dank and see if we have some spare ones lying around. But for the most part, I just don't want my inventory to clog up every time I break stone, especially if I'm trying to like make the base bigger or, for example, make a, a new space to put the, the blast furnace in. And not too long later, the bricks are done and the nether bricks are done. And so back over in our storage request table, we should now have everything we need to make 27 blast brick. And again, just like before, if we go and drop that down in this 3x3 three three hole over here. We can then grab our engineer's hammer, right click on the front, and boom, we get a blast furnace. Now, much like its cousin, the coke oven, the main feature of the blast furnace, outside of its ability to make things like steel, is that it is very, 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 very slow. And so, uh, for example here, if we go and grab some iron, we currently have 60. We'll take, let's say, 32 for now. We'll put the rest back. We can put that 32 iron into the top slot in here. And then in the bottom slot, I believe we can either put charcoal, regular coal, or coal coke, with coal coke having the longest burn time. And I don't really think there's another use for coal coke for us, at least not just yet. And so I'm uh, quite happy just to throw that coal coke in there and use that to uh, smelt our iron, but uh, as you can see, the uh, progress bar in the top left there is pretty slow. It's not terrible, but it's gonna take quite a while to get 32 steel. Thankfully, if we're gonna make three water wheels, we only need three steel ingots. You don't have to make three water wheels, you can make just one water wheel and that will produce power, but if you want to produce the most amount of power from one uh, kinetic dynamo with water wheels connected to it, you're going to want to put three water wheels onto that. Uh, we do have our first steel here and so we can go and make our first water wheel, which I don't think should be too difficult. To make this, we also need four water wheel segments. Each one is made with four treated sticks and three planks. That means in total, we're going to need 16 treated sticks. Right now we have 12, so four more gets us up to that 16 number. And then from there, hopefully we have what it takes to make one, two, three, and four water wheel segments. And boom, we have a water wheel. Now, as it mentions in the quest book here, we do need to connect it to a kinetic dynamo. The kinetic dynamo is made with three iron, two redstone, and a copper coil block. The copper coil block made with eight LV wire coil 
and an iron ingot, the LV wire coil is made with regular sticks or treated sticks, but regular sticks are cheaper, along with four copper wire. Copper wire can be made in a couple of different ways. The easiest way for us to make it is going to be to craft a copper sheet with uh, engineer's wire cutters. These are super easy to make. And if I'm not mistaken, we should be able to take copper and if we craft it with our engineer's hammer, that crafts it directly into copper plates. So if we take a few copper plates, we can then craft those with our cutters to make copper wire. And if we're gonna make eight LV wire coil, we need eight copper wire, which means we just need one more of what we have. So we can make one more plate and then one more wire. We can then craft those wires into LV wire coils. And then from there, we can craft the coil block and then finally the kinetic dynamo. Nice. So the way this works is that you can place down the dynamo. Again, we'll put this, let's say here for now. And then you can place the water wheels onto that dynamo. And again, you can put up to three of these next to each other. So you just right click the second one onto the front. In fact, if we go and check, how are we doing on steel? Do we have two more? We do, we have three in fact, perfect. So now if we uh, once again, grab a few more buckets of creosote and use those to make some more treated wood, we should be able to fairly easily, I think, make two more water wheels. Boom, and boom, there we go. Not too long later, we have two more water wheels. So you can place these here and here to make the very large water wheel. And then the way this works is you can place water um, at the top of the water wheel and have the water flow over the water wheel and as that water flows it will actually begin to spin and move the water wheel thus generating redstone flux in the kinetic dynamo which we can then extract from the kinetic dynamo using these insulated lv wire coils so um i don't know if we'll do that just yet because we're kind of running out of time for today real quick just to show you this working and by the way this is not uh, even close to the final uh, resting place for this water wheel i will definitely move it but if i real quick go and grab my sigil which is down in here so if we take our water sigil and if we just do again temporarily let's say we do something like this we do one two three we should look at that see that begin to spin now of course this is an absolute nightmare of a mess however this is the general premise of the water wheel the water wheel spins and produces redstone flux in that kinetic dynamo. And then what we can do at the start of the next stream is we can begin to make some of these wire coils and uh, wire connectors to actually begin to transfer that power to other things that need it. Um, surprisingly, we've not actually completed this quest because the quest is not unlocked. Oh, so we have to complete the uh, insulated LV wire coil quest first. That should be fine. Again, in order to make the tough fabric, we do need to get industrial hemp fiber, uh, which again is made from those hemp seeds that we got earlier when we broke grass. And I think it even says here that, uh, yeah, to get hemp, use bone meal on grass and then break it. Um, I think what we'll do next time is we'll, of course, move this water wheel. I'll find a better location for it uh, between streams. Um, also, now that we're getting things like um, the granite and the diorite and the weathered limestone automatically, uh, I might start using some of these to kind of decorate the base, um, especially if we head on over to our saw cutter over here. We can uh, drop these in and we can make, you know, like cool bricks and uh, fancy weathered limestone bricks and all that kind of stuff and pillars and whatnot. So I might take a look at some of those between streams and start to look at uh, making the base look a little bit nicer and maybe not just completely uh, made of uh, stone. I'll also probably take a little bit of time uh, and tweak this system right here, try and uh, get the timings just right on the conveyor belt uh, and try and make sure that things are moving as they should. And it will also look at actually using some of the redstone flux that we're generating uh, from this water wheel here, ideally to power something like the uh, the garden cloche, which is going to allow us to automatically farm things like the industrial hemp, which is then going to allow us to get infinite string. And we can also look at growing things like sweet berries to allow us to uh, automatically get the, uh, the fruit salad that we're after, uh, that we can then of course put into our backpack and have fed to us automatically, thanks to the fact that we now have the feeding upgrade. Uh, we can also work a bit further through this quest line. In fact, there were some uh, better power generators coming fairly soon as well. And then we could also look at uh, maybe starting with some new meta craft and, and also working more towards uh, the late game blood magic and uh, early game Batania stuff. But for now, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.